All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is the host of the Emmy award-winning show, Dennis Miller Live on HBO. He's also going to be appearing on the new Microsoft Network on the Internet. Please welcome Dennis Miller. <laughs> You know, Conan, I can tell after three years you're at peace with yourself doing Tyson pictures with his face in a dog's ass. <laughs> that, it's an inner peace, I agree. <laughs> that takes a confident individual. <laughs> what, what do you think my life expectancy is now, Dennis? Oh, well, that's, uh, that, is, that is rolling the dice. Yeah, that well, day. you're going to walk me to my car yes, tonight. I am. <laughs> Just back uh -huh. in my room, uh -huh. watching uh, my favorite part of the day, every day, the complete <coughs> embodiment of the human experience, the Jeopardy Wheel of Fortune tandem hour. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune, now uh -huh. considered to be Thunderdome for chiclet brains in this culture. The uh, <laughs> puzzle topic, body of water, puzzle reads M blank, SS blank, SS blank, PP blank, and the cretin wants to buy a vow. And, uh, <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm thinking, you know, there's a reason that Wheel of Fortune is on after Jeopardy, because after you watch Jeopardy, Andy, and you're... <laughs> He's a Jeopardy watcher, yeah. After you watch Jeopardy and you're forced to choke down the foul-tasting tequila shot of your own abject ignorance, it's always nice <laughs> to be able to bite into the refreshing lime wedge of other people's incredible <laughs> stupidity on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> and, uh... It's just, uh Listen. This isn't HBO, Dennis. You, uh... <laughs> You've strayed from your right. homeland. We never do the Tyson's dog bone thing <laughs> on HBO. <laughs> hey, listen, I, you know, I haven't... Uh, we, years ago, uh, when I was a writer on Saturday Night Live, I, I, asked I hung you, out with you. I remember asking you to produce my first talk show for the Chicago Tribune. Because I thought, you know, you had such a uh, great mind. And, mm -hmm. and you telling me, uh, something's up, I want to try something. You were very <laughs> nebulous about it. And as it turns out, I, uh, you know, obviously a couple months later, I saw you got this. I think you're doing great. Man. Oh, well, Good thank you. you. But, but I wanted uh, to congratulate. I, uh, it's a love fest here. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate you on, uh, on the Emmys. Yeah. You've got like nine Emmys I've, now uh, for your show. That's did great. you hear the great Bill Maher story when he goes to visit Omar? You know Bill Maher, the comedian. He, Who goes up uh, politically incorrect? Yeah. He goes to visit Olmeyer one day, years the ago. The president of NBC. Yeah. But okay. Olmeyer is doing sports or something. He's mm -hmm. done Wide World of Sports. He's got 50 Emmys sitting on a you know, piece of furniture behind his desk. It's all very impressive. Marr, who, you know, I, I know Marr now has clout, and he's a bit of a smartass, but he, he always made us laugh because he was a smartass before we had ever achieved anything. Marr walks in on some gig, and he looks up at the credenza with 50 Emmys. He goes, Hey, Donnie, who's the bowler? <laughs> <laughs> Mar always uh, had an attitude, man. You gotta give him that. Uh -huh. Yeah, Don Olmeyer's my boss. <laughs> and he, he's tight with the juice. <laughs> Ah, the O.J. Why thing. are you getting us? Oh, you got a nice segue. On OJ you used to Don Omar to get into an O.J. Uh, reference. Okay, thank you. My favorite moment ever, beyond even the spousal abuse benefit at the Rockingham Plaza, mm -hmm. where I would remind you O.J. battered the shrimp himself. My favorite moment is the uh, is in the opening statements, calling your deceased wife the mother of your children a co-core. I mean, usually. You see balls that big, they're rolling through a cavern behind Indiana Jones, okay? I mean, that is just unbelievable. O.J. shows up at LAX, greeted by cries of murder, murder. Turns out he wasn't being heckled, it was just his limo driver trying to hook up with him. But you know, Conan... <laughs> we need rim shots here, Max. Where are you? <laughs> well, that's the big uh -huh. thing in L.A. now, the, uh, 
DOJ thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it will be for like the next 30 yeah, years. It, it, it is our, it, it is the touchstone for our culture. You had the Renaissance, you had the Black Plague. We live in the era of the OJ trials. You know, it's like every morning you wake up and there's something else. Mm -hmm. LA is such a funny city that way. I always find that the stress they put on cosmetic stuff to be so amazing. There are women in Los Angeles whose breasts are so hard that superstitious people actually knock on them to reassure themselves, all right? <laughs> That was, oh, that was so far beyond rim. That was, <laughs> that was, that the was intrusive. Yeah. That was the opening to that was the opening to Born in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into that. It really screws up this show left yeah. and right. That was a good one, Max. You gotta give you that. Max was on my show. Max, you tell me that was your first TV gig? First time I was ever on TV. That's right. And you know what? He makes me laugh so much in the sketches. Now, how many sketches did you find out before his deadpan made him so funny? Because I sit at home and I go, you know, at first I uh, admire him as a musician, but right. he actually kills me in the sketches. He's so, he's got that perfect uh, sort of nonplus deadpan that makes me laugh a lot. Maxie, you're up for a little Peabody Award for your acting. Uh, All right. Well, <laughs> there was the you deadpan that you were talking about. <laughs> the deadpan is when you're acting, not right. when you're... <laughs> When you're Never bantering, know. give me an eye twitch or something, all right? <laughs> give me some sort of uh, brainwave activity. Oh, good Lord. Can we, uh, we're going to take a second. We're going to do uh, some commercials. We come back more with...